Hi there, welcome back. This is Guy from My Energy Manager. Today we're looking at the economics of solar plus battery for your home. This is a follow on to an earlier presentation that you'll find on our website. Firstly, a reminder of where we got to last time. Well, in the example we looked at, we looked at a home which was using about 25 kilowatt hours per day of electricity. This is about what you'd expect from a three to five person household. We assumed it had a three kilowatt rooftop solar installed. And then we added a seven kilowatt hour battery. And we looked at what would happen over a single summer workday. Well, last time we found that when we add solar to a household of 25 kilowatt hours, uh, three and add a three kilowatt solar system, then on a sunny summer day, we get more generation than we need, uh, at least during the time when the sun is shining. This chart on the left hand side shows, shows this. We've got time across the bottom, we've got kilowatt hours along the top. Uh, the, the solid area is showing the household load and the yellow line is showing the gross solar generation and the pink line is showing the excess. That's the difference between the load and the total generation. So this excess here has got to go somewhere. And in most solar installations, that gets exported to the grid at, at some feed and tariff, ranging from around 65, 66 cents down to, down to nothing. When we add a battery, we transfer this excess solar generation from being exported, we transfer, we transfer it to being used internally at a later time. And so we no longer have this big excess generation curve. We only have a small amount of excess generation. Where's it gone? It's gone in here. It's filled up the battery. We were represented by the green line and it's only when we have a when our green, when our battery is full, do we have any excess generation? During the evening, the battery discharges and displaces this, uh, this house load, so it no longer has to be purchased from the grid. So what about our assumptions for our economic analysis? Well, we're looking at a single summer day, as in the how does it work example. We're looking at a single house Load profile, 25 kilowatt hour daily usage, 3 kilowatt solar panels generating 19 kilowatt hours of generation for the day. We add a 7 kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour battery. We have a constraint on there of 2 kilowatts of peak discharge and 8% losses in each direction for the energy going in and coming out. We're assuming a peak retail tariff of 30 cents kilowatt hour and an off-peak tariff of 16 cents kilowatt hour. As we said, we're working on a single workday, not a weekend, and the peak applies from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. And our solar feed and tariff is assumed to be six cents a kilowatt hour. So what do the numbers look like for this single day? Okay, now we get down to the nitty gritty of how we actually make a saving with our battery and just quantifying what that saving is. So in this chart, we've combined a few different things. We've got our solar generation, We've got our load through here, and then down here, this, this whole area of the pink and the purple is showing you the excess solar generation, that difference up there. Now our, our battery, what our battery is gonna do is it's gonna take some of our excess solar from here, and it's gonna put it over here to offset some of our load. There is still gonna be some exported solar because our battery gets full, this is represented by our purple. So this, there's no change in value here for us for having the battery in place. But this pink area, we get a change in value. Instead of receiving six cents per kilowatt hour, our feed and tariff, we're gonna be offsetting a cost over here of 30 cents per kilowatt hour. But not quite for the full amount of energy because we do have some losses. So our total excess generation quantifies to 9.63 kilowatt hours, but the 6.96 of that we're gonna to send to our battery, which is gonna be worth 5.89 kilowatt hours by the time we put it in the battery and then bring it out again. So we go from 
getting 42 cents worth of revenue to saving $1.77 as a result of having a battery. And that is a benefit, net benefit of $1.35. Well, the obvious, obvious question is then, $1.35, well, it doesn't sound like much. Is it enough to pay for the battery? The short answer is no. Look, assuming every day was like this example, where it's a work day, it's sunny, uh, with the loads um, as described here, uh, with no interest costs or capital costs factored in for buying the battery, uh, but on the flip side, we're not assuming any differential, any change in the differential between the solar feed, solar feed-in tariff and the peak retail rate. Yes, the solar feed-in tariff will disappear and is disappearing, and the peak rate will continue to climb. But just as a quick and dirty, we're we're keeping these things constant, and we're assuming this day is repeated every day for 10 years. Then that net benefit is simply the dollar 35 times 365 times 10, which is 4,924 dollars. But the battery in Australia costs $12,000. Yes, we'd like to fly over to America and buy one for three, three and a half, or probably about, uh, it'd probably be about $6,000 by the time you installed it in Australia and with the, with the exchange rate and so on. But at the moment, buying them in Australia is $12,000. And so the cost of that battery would need to half, or the benefit would need to at least double for this to start looking reasonable based on our quick and dirty assumptions. But even then, there are a number of assumptions here, like we've said, that, that will not hold, will simply not hold over one year, let alone 10 years. Some working for the battery case and some work, working against it. So in conclusion, we need to do a bit more detailed modeling. And we're gonna do that coming up next. In the detailed modeling, we're gonna relax some of these assumptions and we're, gonna, we're not just simply gonna extrapolate one day over 10 years, but we are going to model a number of different days. We're going to model the, the non-work days because there are about 30% of, of our days during the year are weekends and so we have a, an off-peak tariff instead of a peak tariff that we're offsetting. That'll make a difference. But what if the electricity tariffs keep increasing? Well, they probably will, so that'll make a difference. And of course, we know that every day is not sunny, so that's going to make a difference. And what if the solar feed-in tariff goes away? Well, it is end of this year for people in New South Wales. And what if battery costs come down? Well, they probably will. And what if my capital isn't free? Well, I hope it isn't. And what if my load shape is, diff is different to what we've assumed? It probably will be as well. So in further modeling, we're gonna relax some of these assumptions and look at how big an impact they make in our assumptions. So you need to watch out for this on myenergymanager.com.au because we'll have this available to you shortly. So as always, please leave your comments. I'd love to hear what you think about this quick and dirty analysis. We've quantified the example that we looked at in an earlier presentation to see what the numbers look like. Um, giving you a quick and dirty to give you sort of an orders of magnitude of what the battery looks like uh, and cost compared to the benefit. Leave some comments on myenergymanager.com.au or on our Facebook page. We'd love to hear from you. Speak soon.